Hello. Our last pause for prayer dealt with dialogue, conversation, the words that we speak to one another by which our relationships are built. In this session, we're going to take our thoughts a next step further by considering two well-known sayings. First of all, have you heard the saying, a picture speaks a thousand words? A picture speaks a thousand words. It means that just describing something is no substitute for actually experiencing it. It's not as much fun, for example, reading a story about going on a roller coaster as it actually would be being there in the middle of a theme park. The second saying you've probably even more likely heard of is, actions speak louder than words. Just as we've discovered in other sessions, we need to put our words into practice, translate our beliefs into our behaviour. We need to practice what we preach. Just saying something isn't as effective or persuasive as actually doing it. You might say, I'm not afraid of spiders, but until you pick one up, no one can be quite sure. Words, dialogue, conversation. As we thought about in our last session, these are really important and they build the relationships which give colour and content to our lives. But moving from mere description to actual experience, from belief to behaviour, giving voice to the idea that a picture speaks a thousand words and that actions speak louder than words, these things are also really necessary, as we're going to go on to see. Because these sessions are online, we've spent some time already thinking about social media. And I'm quite interested in the fact of how popular Instagram is, certainly with younger people, because Instagram is based around pictures more than it is around words. We learn an awful lot visually using our sense of sight, and the same has been true through the ages in terms of, of how people have learned about God. When you come into a church like St George's, you're struck by its size and its beauty. And you can always come in every day, the doors are unlocked and open wide. You see statues and images and stained glass windows, which help us to think about the Christian faith. If we went back several centuries, remember that in times past, many people couldn't read. Many people hadn't had as much of an education as we are also fortunate to have. And so instead of giving people books to discover Christianity, we built churches and we carved the stories of our faith into stone and glass and paint. We help people to become visual learners because a picture speaks a thousand words. The movement from the word to the picture actually lies at the very heart of our Christian faith. It isn't long now until Christmas, just a month and a bit left, and in the Christmas story, the word becomes flesh. This needs a bit of unpacking, just like any Christmas gift. Turn to St John's Gospel in the Bible, and you'll find that he there begins with a story of creation, just like the book Genesis, with which the whole Bible begins. John says, in the beginning was the Word. And what he's referring to is the way in which God created the universe, as the book Genesis describes. In Genesis, God speaks the world into creation. He says, for example, let there be light. And with each word that God utters, another part of the world comes into being. It's like us writing a story. With each stroke of the pen, another character appears on the page. So in the beginning was the word. And the special term for this word in the Greek language in which the Bible was written is logos. From logos comes our words logical and logic, meaning things we can understand. So God made the world understandable by describing and speaking the way it should be. Christians believe that Jesus was the word by which God made everything in creation. When God spoke, Jesus was the word, the logos, which came out of God's mouth. But at Christmas, something amazing happened, because at Christmas, the word became flesh. Jesus, who had previously been spiritually present in heaven, becomes physically present to us on earth. God becomes a little baby whom people could see and hear and touch. A picture speaks a thousand words, remember. Pictures help us to illustrate important ideas. If I hold up my thumb in this gesture, you'll know that it's a symbol, a picture, for saying yes. Jesus, the child born in Bethlehem, is the symbol, the picture by which we can understand the invisible God. When we look at Jesus, just like looking at a picture, we understand God in a new and more perfect way. So we might look at Jesus' kindness and understand that God is love. We might look at Jesus' teaching and understand that God is wise. We might look at Jesus' miracles and understand that God is all-powerful. Jesus is the picture which reveals the face of God. 
If logos was our special term for the word of God, that is Jesus, then the special term icon reveals Jesus as the symbol of God. Jesus is God's icon, God's symbol. Jesus is the picture which tells God's story. We can look at Jesus and know everything that's important about God. And I think that the popularity of Instagram over Facebook tells us in a roundabout way that the icon is more important than the logos, that the picture is superior to the word. Actions speak louder than words. That was our second saying. Can you see how then in Jesus God puts into practice the words of his love? God spoke those words of love in the beginning by which all the world came into creation. In Genesis, God kept on saying, let there be this and let there be that. But at Christmas, in Jesus' incarnation, that means Jesus becoming flesh and blood, a human being, at Christmas the word becomes flesh. The word is put into practice. The action speaks louder than the word. The story of God becomes a reality. It's like the main character in a novel, in a novel leaping off the page. This is also where we come in, because we can help to tell the story of God's love. We can do so by putting our words into action, by making our love real in what we do. Each time we act according to the story we tell about what's important, we reflect just a little bit of what God did when Jesus was born. Each time our actions fit with the nice and pleasant words that we utter, we reflect just a little bit of the word becoming flesh. So we may tell a great story about what's important in our lives, but do we also put into practice these words? Actions speak louder than words, after all, and a picture speaks a thousand words. So let us, like Jesus, be icons of God's love. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, whose every word is love, you spoke in the person of Jesus into the darkness of creation, and by his incarnation you let there be light. Help us to become reflections of the love which you bear for the world. Help us to put your word into our actions so that we might become illustrations of the story of your love. Increase your love within us and strengthen our relationships of peace so that forever and always we may rejoice in the blessings of your love. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you all very much, and see you next time.